Creating consistent branding is super important to build customer loyalty and trust. In this video, I'm going to show you how to completely customize your WordPress admin dashboard and login page using the free plugin White Label CMS. In this tutorial, we'll go over hiding and showing different menu items, adding your logo, modifying the dashboard, designing the login page, and customizing the colors and styles to match your business's branding. Let's get started. Okay, here we are starting out in our WordPress dashboard that is not very nice looking um, that we are going to make look much better. And the first thing we're going to do is make sure we have all the plugins installed that we need. So go to plugins and then add new. And then in the top right, we are going to search for white label CMS and then hit enter or it's going to do it automatically. And then probably the first one that pops up, you're going to see it's by video user manuals. That's the one we're going to use. So click install now and then go ahead and click activate. And now that's the only plugin we need for this tutorial, but I'm also going to use Elementor and Elementor Pro, um, which is an optional thing that you can use also. And if you do want to use that, obviously those plugins need to be installed as well. So to get started getting things set up, go ahead and hover over settings and then go to white label CMS. Now I'm not going to go through every single setting here because that's going to make this video way too long and way too boring and you guys can figure a lot of the stuff out. But I am going to show you some of the things I'm going to do and I'm going to point out some things that I think you might find really useful. So first things first, if you want to add um, your custom branding images, you're going to have to switch on hide WordPress logo and links. So I'm going to do that. And we also have an option here to change the howdy text. And yes, I am going to change that to high just because I think it sounds better. And then for side menu branding, we can add an image on the top of the side menu. And I'm going to do that because I want my logo up here. So I'm going to click upload. And then I'm going to click upload files and I am going to drag in the image I resized to fit there. And if you need to know how to resize an image, I have a tutorial for that, which I will link in the description below. And once that's done, I'm going to click insert into post. And we're going to also want to put a collapsed side menu image for when you hit collapse menu because obviously the regular size logo isn't going to fit there. Notice this one has a max width of 36 pixels. So you're going to again, click upload again, click upload files and again, drag in the correctly sized file for that place and then click insert into post. And then if you scroll down, you have some options to change the footer branding, which is right down here. Um, where it says, thank you for creating with WordPress. You can change that stuff up here. So since I'm all done, I'm going to go ahead and click the save button and you can see that my icon is there. And when we uncollapse this menu, my logo is there. Now you may be like, Nicole, that looks terrible. Um, I know it's because I'm going to plan on changing the color of the background of this which I will show you later in this tutorial. And when I do that, this logo will look much better. But first let's go ahead and hop over to the login tab. And this is how we are going to change that login page and make it also match with our branding. So the first thing we want to do is add in our login logo. Notice this one has a max width of 320 pixels, which is larger than the one we put in the sidebar. So I'm going to make a new logo. And when I'm done with that, I'm going to click upload and then upload files and then drag that one in and then click insert into post. And then you have the option to add in a retina login logo, which is going to be two times the size. And I believe that is for Apple devices. I am not an Apple girl, so I'm not sure. Please don't hate me for that, but I am still going to add in that retina logo. And then I'm going to click insert into post. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you can see a live preview link. So if we click that, we can see how it's going to look so far. So let's close out of that. And then with that information, you can go ahead and make changes to the colors. And then after you take a look at that and kind of get an idea of what things are going to look like, you can go through here and you can change the colors. You can add a background image. 
If you add a background image, you probably want to choose that it's going to be full screen. And then if you scroll down, you have some other options and a whole bunch more color options there. When you're done, click save. And then let's head over to the dashboard tab. And what I definitely want to do here is hide a bunch of these dashboard panels um, because a lot of them are unnecessary and a lot of them are really confusing. Um, I've had clients uh, get stressed out about the site health status and sometimes it's just not important things that just look scary. So I'm going to keep that shut off. Also, my clients are going to care about WordPress events. And I'm really just going to get rid of a lot of stuff because the dashboard can be intimidating for people that aren't used to WordPress. So I just want to keep things as simple as possible. Then if we scroll down, we have an option to um, add a dashboard welcome panel, which I am going to do. So I'm going to turn that on and I am going to do an Elementor panel. You do have the option of just doing um, basic HTML or Beaver Builder if you have Beaver Builder. And if you did basic HTML, you would just type that out right here. Um, I am going to do Elementor and I'm going to switch that on and I actually don't have a template yet. Um, so we're going to make one real quick together. Um, but before we do, I also want to show you in this section, you do have the option to add an RSS feed dashboard panel and you would put in the title, add a logo if you wanted to, and the RSS feed right here. And then you can choose how many items you want to appear and do an introduction HTML if you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. And then to add a template, I'm going to go to Elementor templates theme builder. And if you don't have this, that's because you don't have Elementor Pro. You do need Elementor Pro to be able to do this. Um, so I'm going to click single page and then I'm going to click add new. And I'm just going to insert blank here. I'm not going to design a whole thing here for you guys. Um, I do have a tutorial on Elementor. Well, I have a lot of tutorials about Elementor. So I'm going to link a couple of them in the description. But you guys can design this however you want and have it end up um, in the front on the dashboard as a welcome, which I'm going to show you. Um, but first things first, you're probably going to want to change this template to be the full canvas. So go ahead and hover over the bottom um, icon, the gear icon and click it to get to the page settings and then um, change the page layout to Elementor canvas. And I'm going to go ahead and change this title to um, welcome dashboard. Also, oops, it knocked me out of it. Back to settings, welcome dashboard. Okay, and now you can see that it went ahead and took away the header and the footer after we set it to Elementor Canvas. Um, and then, like I said, I'm just going to kind of just throw in a um, test thing um, just so we have something there. And that's not, I don't want that. Let's get rid of that. We're going to just do a regular title. And then we're going, let's go ahead and throw in a picture just so we have something else there. And then let me go ahead and choose an image and I'll choose the pretty beach. And a lot of times people here also like to put maybe if you want to do a form so they can email you easily, like support questions, you can go ahead and search for the form widget and throw that in here. But if you do that, you're going to want to make sure your email is the email address that this form goes to, not the client's email. So go ahead and click email and then put your email address there where it says to. And then if you're trying to think about what else to put here, think about your customer, try to put yourself in their shoes and think about what might be helpful to them. Maybe an FAQ, maybe some tutorials. You can put all that right here. So then when you're done, go ahead and click publish. And then we're going to exclude this from all pages because we don't want this showing up anywhere on the actual site. Then we're going to click save and close. And then to get out of here, we're going to hit the three lines and then go to exit. And to set that, head back to settings, white label CMS, back to dashboard, scroll down to where it says uh, welcome panel, Elementor switched on, and we are going to choose the welcome dashboard. And then we are going to click save. And then let's test to see if that worked by heading to the dashboard. And it did. There it is. That's great. All right. So let's head back to the white label CMS settings by going to settings, white label CMS. And now we've got dashboard done. So let's move over to menus. 
And then it's going to ask if you want to hide menus. And I'm going to say yes. And now it's telling me that I am the white label CMS admin. So it's going to hide stuff only for other people. So you don't have to worry about hiding something that you're going to need later. Like you're not going to make sure you're not giving your client your own admin login to their website. You should be making them their own admin login for their website. So it's going to be hidden from them, but you're going to be able to see everything still. And then this is very easy. You just shut off down here anything you don't want them to have access to. And you can also, you can click the drop down and um, hide the sub items also. And then when you're done with this page, just go ahead and click save. And then last we have settings. And we've got a couple options here, but what I really want to show you is the custom CSS. Now you do have the option to upload a custom CSS URL, but to keep things easy, I'm just going to write some here. Now, obviously, if you want to do custom CSS, you have to know CSS. And if you know CSS, you probably know how to figure out what each element on the page is so you can style it. If for some reason you don't, I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So for whatever you want to change the style on, go ahead and just right click somewhere and then click inspect. And then when you hover over the different things down here, you're going to see what gets selected, right? So if I want to change the background to this admin menu and I click admin menu back and I look over here in the styles, I can see that there is a background color style right here. And that's going to be what we are going to change if we are going to change the background color. So with the inspect element, I can go ahead and change that and see how it's going to look before I add the actual CSS into the site. And that is exactly what I want. I want my menu bar to be white. Um, obviously, I am going to have to change the colors of the links and these hovers later too. But you see now that logo looks good on it. Though I'll probably add some padding in there also. Now we see here, we remember we've got all these different classes and IDs here. So you might want to take a peek at that just to make sure that it looks like um, you're making changes everywhere you want it to and know where you're not. Um, and then I would just select all of that, control C, close out of this, head back here. Now you see if you just refresh this page, the styles go back to normal automatically. Like just, just playing an inspect element doesn't do anything to the actual page. You would have to paste it in the custom CSS for admin. We can take away that width because that's not necessary. And then when we click save, we've got a white admin menu. Now, if for some reason, of course, again, if you know CSS, you should know this. Um, if it doesn't work, pop in that important and we should force it to work. And that's it. Now you have a custom branded WordPress admin dashboard and login page. If I was helpful to you, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you're building your own website, make sure to check the description to get your free download of my nine step website roadmap. It will guide you through everything you need to make and launch your website from start to finish. Thanks so much for watching.